episode of the 802 News podcast is out today. A key player in the Kingdom Con speaking out after leaving prison about what life is like for him now. Here's Darren Perrin with host Mark Johnson. He promised to help transform the Northeast Kingdom into a tourist destination and a technology hub. Former JP President Bill Stenger was skilled at bringing in cash to one of the most economically challenged parts of the state. Major makeovers at Jay and Burke Mountain and an entire block in Newport brought down to make way for new businesses. And he did it through EB-5 money. Foreign investors paid $500,000 to help create job generating businesses businesses in exchange for a path to U.S. residency. But the dream Bill Stenger pitched for the area he said he loved turned into a nightmare. In 2019, federal officials announced it was a sham. A multi-year investigation uncovered the largest fraud case in Vermont's history, the Great Kingdom Con. Stenger says he was duped too by the mastermind behind the scheme, Ariel Kiros, and Kiros's lawyers protected their client. And that he didn't realize what was happening with so many projects, so much going on, until it was too late. I got caught up in trying to complete them. Uh, I got a little, I think I got careless. Uh, in in not uh, following up enough, I felt that if I finished the projects and got everyone what they were in the projects for, that the end would have justified the means. Singer tells his story to Mark Johnson in a special 802 News podcast, which you can find on our website, WCAX.com. And Mark, he told you that he wishes he got help back in 2015 before it all came crumbling down. Yeah, the SEC really came in and put down the hammer in 2016. In 2015, they were building the last, the, the big crown jewel, the ANC bio project. And Stenger says that he would send the bills down to Miami where Ariel Quiros was, and suddenly they weren't really being paid on time. And at that point, he knew that there was something going on and wishes now that he had done more at that time. So then he, does he accept any blame for this? Does he have any regrets? Uh, he has a lot of regrets. I, I think he regrets that, I think he was engaged in some wishful thinking. Um, he would describe it as naivety, but he was really grossly irresponsible. The 800 or so investors in this had really put their trust in him. He was the front person for this. And, you know, he absolutely, either by design or neglect or naivety, dropped the ball. No question about it. You know this. He was revered the king of the kingdom, if you will. What's his life been like since this scandal, since he went to jail? Well, this is quite a fall. In 2011, he was named by the Vermont Chamber of Commerce as Citizen of the Year. You know, he was revered as the, the king of the kingdom. He was kind of the golden boy. And, you know, spending nine months um, in jail, even though it was a medium security prison, you know, is a humbling experience. And he is now back in Newport. He is trying to do what he can to help uh, undo some of this damage, which he'll never be able to do. He's trying to find a um, buyer w along with the federal receiver who took control of a lot of Ariel Quiros's um, ass ac assets. And they're trying to find somebody to take over that hole in the ground in, in Newport. But, you know, there's a lot of blame to go around here. I mean, Ariel Quiros was siphoning off $50 million. No one has accused Bill Stenger of taking money. The state really, in hindsight, never should have allowed them to continue drawing in investors. The bank that Ariel Quiros was working with agreed to a $150 million settlement for the role that they played in this, and, and that, that's a lot of money. It's a fascinating listen again, a special two-part uh, podcast, 802 podcast. You gotta take a listen, it's good stuff, on WCAX.com right now. Mark Johnson, thank you very much. Thanks, Darren.